Hey everyone, it's Alex, and I am back with another video preview of the 89th Academy Awards. Today I'm going to be giving you a preview of the category of Best Documentary Short Subject. The goal of Best Documentary Short Subject is to honor the best documentary whose runtime cannot be longer than 40 minutes. There are two categories at the Academy Awards honoring documentaries. Best Documentary Short Subject, which honors documentaries that are no longer than 40 minutes, and Best Documentary Feature, which honor documentaries that are at least 40 minutes. Best Documentary Feature will be the subject of the next video coming out after this. But today we're going to be looking at the, the documentary shorts that are eligible in this category. And due to the uniqueness of this category, there are a lot of rules in terms of eligibility requirements. Now, last year I pretty much just read verbatim what all the rules were, and I'm not necessarily going to do that again this year, but what I am going to do is give a reminder of what the eligibility factors in this category are. One of the biggest eligibility factors in this category is the eligibility period. In this category's case, the eligibility period is from September 1st, 2015 to August 31st, 2016. And during that period, these documentary shorts can qualify for Oscar consideration in three different ways. The first way is to do a seven-day commercial run in a movie theater in either Los Angeles or New York City. And in the process, the, mo the movie must not only be available for paid admission, but also must be advertised in one of these newspapers. The New York Times, Time Out New York, The Village Voice, The Los Angeles Times, or LA Weekly. The second way a documentary short can be eligible for Oscar consideration is film festivals. To quote directly from the Academy Rulebook, the film must have won a qualifying award at a competitive film festival as specified in the documentary short subject qualifying festival list. And the third way a documentary short can be eligible is the Student Academy Awards. Uh, to quote directly from the Academy Rulebook, the film must have won a gold, silver, or bronze medal award in the Academy's 2016 Student Academy Awards competition in the documentary category. And then the final rule of eligibility is the nature of the documentary itself. If a documentary film is basically a promotional or instructional video or is basically an unfiltered record of a performance in, in which we just watch somebody act or sing or do something else and there's no commentary about it, no look and how the person prepares to do what they do, then it's not eligible. The film must be an examination or a commentary on the issue it's portraying. So those are the qualifying factors that make documentary shorts eligible for Oscar consideration, and now let's get on to the eligible contenders themselves. According to the Academy press release, 61 contenders were submitted to the Academy for consideration. What all those 61 contenders were, I do not know, because for the short films, the Academy does not usually publish the full list of eligible contenders. For other categories like documentary feature, original score, original song, makeup, and best picture, they will publish the full list of eligible contenders, though. But from the 61 eligible contenders, 10 semi-finalists have been chosen by the members of the Academy's documentary branch. And from these 10 semi-finalists, five of them will become the official nominees for best documentary short subjects. Here are the 10 eligible contenders. Brillo Box, Three Cents Off, Close Ties, Extremis, 4.1 Miles, Frame 394, Joe's Violin, The Mute's House, The Other Side of Home, Watani, My Homeland, The White Helmets. Now you're probably wondering, I've never even heard of these. What are these documentary shorts even about? Well, I'm here to tell you that today. I had to do quite a lot of research to find out what these documentary shorts were all about. Some of them I got their plot summaries directly off IMDb. Others don't even have an IMDb page yet, and I had to look on various other websites to see if I could find some sort of plot description. 
but luckily I have managed to find plot descriptions for all of these eligible shorts, and I'm going to read them to you right now. So here are what all of these documentary shorts are about. Brillo Box Three Cents Off. Brillo Box Three Cents Off follows a beloved Andy Warhol Brillo Box sculpture as it makes its way from a family's living room to a record-breaking Christie's auction, blending personal narrative with pop culture and exploring how we navigate the ephemeral nature of art and value. Close Ties. 45 years of marriage is an impressive anniversary. Barbara and Zdzislaw, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly because uh, this is about a Polish couple, just kidding. could be proud of themselves if not for the fact that the husband left the wife for his lover eight years ago. But now they are together again, although Barbara claims that if it were not for his infirm legs, Zdzislaw would still be chasing skirts around Krakow. Despite the past resentment, everyday problems with paying bills, an occupied bathroom, and rearranging furniture, they have a hard-to-define bond. Uh, if anybody who's from Poland or is of Polish descent can correct me on the pronunciation of Zdzislaw, if that is indeed the, the correct pronunciation, please let me know in the comment section. All right, moving on. Extremis. Witness the wrenching emotions that accompany end-of-life decisions as doctors, patients, and families in a hospital ICU face harrowing choices. 4.1 miles. A day in the life of a Greek coast guard on the island of Lesbos, who was caught in the middle of the biggest refugee crisis in history since World War II. Frame 394. Frame 394 follows a young man from Toronto who entangles himself in one of America's most high-profile police shootings. Joe's Violin A 91-year-old Holocaust survivor donates his violin to an instrument drive, changing the life of a 12-year-old schoolgirl from the Bronx, and unexpectedly, his own. The Mute's House A building in Israeli Hebron which has been deserted by its Palestinian occupants, is called the Mute's House by the Israeli soldiers stationed there and by the tour guides who pass by daily. The building's only occupants are a deaf woman, Sahar, and her eight-year-old son, Yusuf. The family's unique story in the midst of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict unfolds through the eyes of the young and charismatic Yusuf as he goes through his daily routine on both sides of the torn city. The Other Side of Home. In 1915, an estimated 1.5 million Armenians were killed by the Ottoman Turks during the Armenian Genocide. In 2015, a Turkish woman named Maya discovers that her great-grandmother was a survivor of the Armenian Genocide. Maya embodies the conflict as she has two enemies living in her body, one side that suffers and the other side that denies. The documentary follows Maya as she decides to go to Armenia to take part in the 100th commemoration of the genocide and to explore her conflicted identity. Watani, my homeland. Hamudi, Helen, Farah, and Sarah are the young children of Free Syrian Commander Abu Ali Sliva. They live on the front line of the civil war in Aleppo. They the only family living in a derelict war zone that was once a busy residential neighborhood. After Abu Ali is captured by ISIS, the family is forced to flee their homeland and to start a new life in a small medieval town called Goslar in Germany. The White Helmets After five years of war, over 400,000 Syrians have been killed and millions have fled their homes. In areas out of regime control, those who remain rely on a group of volunteers dedicated to saving anyone in need. They search for survivors among the wreckage as bombs continue to fall. And those are the eligible contenders for Best Documentary Short Subject. What the five official nominees will be, I have no idea. But, uh, but all of these documentaries personally seem fascinating to me. Uh, it was really hard for me to pick which five fascinate me the most, 
but ideally I'd like to see a diverse group of nominees, and by that I mean have each nominee be about something completely different from everything else. So that way we get a full 360 degree representation of the world that we live in. So one documentary that looks very interesting to me is Brillo Box Three Cents Off. Uh, you know, Andy Warhol is a very iconic part of American pop culture, and and as the and this film says, it will blend personal narrative with pop culture, and explore how we navigate the nature of art and value. So that makes me very interested to hopefully see that be nominated, and I guess maybe it'll explore the legacy of Andy Warhol on One Family. Close Ties looks very interesting because just from the description of it, it sounds like it'll be about a very unique, unorthodox married couple because, as it says here, the husband had left his wife for his lover and that he might be still chasing women if he, if he didn't have infirm legs. So it looks like this is about one of those marriages that for everyone else could be a done deal but yet they somehow still stick together. Just just that kind of description alone just makes me wonder what an ordinary day must look like for them. Joe's violin looks very interesting, uh, not only just for the historical aspect about a Holocaust survivor, but it, just for the multi-generational aspect, because as it says here, this Holocaust survivor is 91 years old and a 12-year-old girl inherits his violin. So I'm guessing they must maybe meet and learn from each other. Hopefully if that should be one of the official nominees, uh, hopefully my prediction of, of what happens is accurate. If anybody's seen Joe's Violin, let me know if my prediction is indeed accurate. Uh, the Mute's House looks very interesting. And the fact that it says an eight-year-old uh, goes about on a daily routine through both the Israeli and Palestinian sides of a city uh, makes it sound very interesting. You know, you wonder what, what's it like for him on one side versus the other while he's trying to do his daily routine. Watani, my homeland, looks very eye-opening because if you follow the news, I'm sure you'll have read many reports about uh, ref Syrian refugees leaving their country and flocking to various nations around the world, particularly in Europe. Uh, Germany has actually been probably the biggest uh, nation to welcome these refugees with open arms and help them find a place in their society. Um, so, and of course, moving to any new country provides a lot of challenges in terms of different language, different culture, different customs, different laws, different education and I'm sure a lot of that is probably going to be explored here. So those are the five that look the most interesting to me, but because I haven't seen any of them, I can't say I'm rooting for one over the other. So the only way I'll be able to make my final judgment is when the official nominees come out and my uh, local art house theater puts the package of them together and will screen them, and then I'll go to that screening and watch them there. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments section below if any of these documentary shorts interest you and which ones uh, you're most interested in seeing. If you have seen any of these, please let me know whether, or whether you liked them or hated them in the comments section. Please subscribe to my channel if you've not yet already done so, and stay tuned for more video previews of the Oscars, Golden Globes, and almost all the other big award shows coming out this year. Bye!